the Saudi Arabia drone attack. What they're not telling you. Coming up next on Deceptions of the Ages News. Hello everybody, welcome to Deceptions of the Ages News. I'd like to thank everybody for subscribing and leaving comments. We've been here almost a year now and it's really a fascinating project and we've made so many friends. So thanks for uh, supporting us, for subscribing, and of course we always have a Patreon channel at hindsight.com. So today you guys, we're going to be talking about the Iranian attack on Saudi Arabia, what they're not telling you, and what you need to know. All right, well, let's start off with what we do know. We do know that on Saturday in Saudi Arabia time, they were attacked by drones, according to the first reports, that came from Yemen. Then the story has changed and now drones and possibly cruise missiles came from the direction of Kuwait or maybe even Iraq or even Iran. So that's the new information. But we need to look at what is going on and what they're really not telling us. Now the first thing that we need to look at is how did the Saudis get surprise attacked? Now, in order to understand how the Saudis got basically ambushed, we have to understand a little bit about the Saudi military and the Saudi Arabian culture and nation per se. And the first thing you have to understand is that the Saudi military is not like any other military. Saudi Arabia is a desert. There is nothing there except oil. In order to keep the oil money coming, the Saudis have an arrangement with Western governments to keep buying weapons, and those weapon systems are then uh, handed to the militaries. The military gets soldiers and air people and Navy people to man the weapon systems, and they get a paycheck. And this goes all the way from the lowest private all the way to the highest general in the Saudi army. So basically, it is a way to keep disparate tribes loyal to the king. It's not necessarily meant to fight wars. That's important. So let's continue on with our topic. You're probably asking yourself, well, how do you know all this stuff? Well, if you had read my book, and I know a lot of people out there probably have, but if you read my book, Killing Time in Saudi Arabia, you'll know that I worked on um, a military contract in Riyadh for the Saudi Arabian National Guard. Now, the Saudi Arabian National Guard is, like the, is not like the American National Guard, its sole purpose is to protect the king. Now, I also worked on my last contract as an instructor at the Air Defense Academy. The very people that should have shot down these drones are the people that I instructed. So the question is, what went wrong? Is it my fault? Well, there we have to go back and talk about the Saudi military. The Saudi military is a way to keep that money flowing downwards and also keep loyalty to the king flowing upwards. So as long as you're getting paid by the king, his uh, livelihood and his health are in your best interest, as is the current Saudi regime in the best interest of millions of people who are employed by the Saudi military. Now, during these drone attacks, where you're probably asking, 
were my famous Saudi air defense people. According to the news, the reason that the Saudi air defense was ambushed, snuck up on, bushwhacked by the Iranians um, was because their weapons are pointed south towards um, Yemen. Now, this could not possibly be the case because Yemen is not a very big threat as far as missiles go. Sure, there have been some attacks, but they have, and we'll go into this in a minute, a very elaborate, elaborate weapon system, and it cannot all be aimed at Yemen. So, what went wrong? Now let's talk about that weapon system. In the year 2011, I actually shared a villa with the guy who negotiated the recent contract for missile defense in Saudi Arabia. And that uh, contract was worth, I believe, $4.3 billion for state-of-the-art missiles. $4.3 billion in missiles, and they were taken out by drones that probably cost a few hundred dollars. What went wrong? Do you remember what I said about the Saudis from the lowest private to the highest general? They're all getting money from the king. Well, these Saudis with this money are able to have families. And families have to get things done on the weekends, just like you and your family, if you have one. Now in Saudi Arabia, these families tend to be large. And so there tends to be a lot of things that have to happen on the weekends. Now, what does this have to do with an Iranian attack? Well, the fact of the matter is the Saudi military is pretty much off on the weekends, right? This may seem completely bizarre to you, but the Saudi weekend or the Saudi military does not really work on the weekends. They are down to just a bare uh, skeleton force. So the Iranians knew this and they just chose to attack them when they were out shopping basically. So it was a complete sneak attack, but it was one that you ha is, is very important for a couple of reasons. Now, in my book, Killing Time, if you will remember, uh, I'm sorry, Killing Time in Saudi Arabia, if you will remember, I worked for the Saudi National Guard and I taught uh, officers, um, captains, lieutenants. And in order to get them excited about their studies, I kept telling them, what happens if you have to uh, defend your country? You're, are you going to be ready? Are you going to have the proper knowledge? And they said, why would we defend our country? The Americans are going to do it for us. We don't have to worry about that. And that was a real shocker to me. And it should be a real shocker to you, but it also should be evidence in the question of, Will Saudi Arabia fight Iran? So, will Saudi Arabia fight Iran? They were caught uh, with their pants down on air defense because they didn't think anybody would attack them on the weekend. They um, expect, I mean, the culture is they are just in the military to get some money so they can have families they don't really expect to have to go and fight a war. Now, the other thing is, is that they are on the, this side of the pond, as they say, and they are heavily lobbying for the Americans to come in and attack. But, and had we had any other, um, anybody else in office, they would have said, how much are you going to pay into our uh, our charity, uh, the, what was that, the, whatever that fund was they had, um, but however much you're going to donate, that's how quickly and how many troops you're going to get. Well, we don't have a president who does that. So our president is saying, Saudi Arabia, you got the weapons, you got the people, you got allies, you got to take care of yourselves. 
So that's pretty refreshing, at least for now. But the fact of the matter is Saudi Arabia is going to have a very hard time fighting an enemy like Iran simply because Iran has been fighting for uh, decades, for generations. They've been fighting against Iraq, they've been fighting in um, Lebanon, and they have also been fighting um, in these wars in Yemen, etc., etc. While Saudis uh, want to live in their villas and watch TV and um, pro progenerate uh, uh, pro procreate uh, the species. So it's going to be very interesting. And you need to know all of this stuff is going on because you're not going to hear it anywhere else except here on Deceptions of the Ages News. And we'll see you next time.